Good morning. I hope I'm audible. Hi, hi. Good morning, sister. Good morning. Good morning to all those who are online and welcome to all the e-learning students as well. Are all of you doing well? Good. Okay. All right. Gertrude, do you have a question? I know, sister. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Just a minute. Okay. All right. We're going to be. Um, so, do we? Do we all know where we are? Which chapter are we in? Today we are in six chapter, sister. We're in sixth chapter. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yes, we are uh, in chapter six, and um, the the first five chapters that we focused on was a lot to do with preparation of ourselves. Okay. So if you look through the first five chapters, one is the first one was we were looking at uh, what God's design is for marriage then the second the third the fourth and the fifth chapter was all looking at how we can prepare for marriage um, uh, ourselves as well as even even when we're looking for a partner what we can um, what, what our expectations are um, what is it that how do we build ourselves in our attitudes in our temperament in our behavior right and also uh, how we can communicate this with each other. So those were the the first five chapters. I, I you know, it's almost like the foundation of of uh, each person who is thinking about getting married. Chapters going forward are all about different aspects in marriage, things that um, are most important when you begin to live together, begin to experience life together. Those are from here, that's what we're we're going to going to really focus on. And today, if you look at chapter six, it's about communication in marriage. Okay, communication in marriage. All right. So, what do you assess is the importance of communication in any relationship, for that matter? Listening. Okay. I said, what is the importance? Why is communication so important in a relationship, especially in marriage? It either makes or breaks the marriage, right? Okay, it's something that can make or break the marriage, right? All right, what else? To understand. The, go ahead. Go ahead. To, under, to understand the partner in a what he needs, what it, uh, what what are his likes and does not uh, what does what does he doesn't like. All right. So you get to understand the person a lot more only if you communicate, right? Because uh, God has given us a medium of language that we can use to express our needs, our desires, our likes, our interests, whatever. It, God has given us that um, medium to do so. Right? And it's only when we are able to share and communicate? Uh, are we uh, are we really building an understanding of each other, of each uh, of ourselves as well as <clears throat> of each other? Okay, all right. So it's essential. Number one, to build a, a strong relationship. It is essential to uh, know, understand each other. It is. Uh, why else is it essential? To maintain relationship. That's what I said. That was the second point. Why else is it important? Suppose you are in a, a cricket team together. Do you need to communicate? OK. Why? To know the strategy, right? Excellent. OK. So is marriage any different? 
No, right? You need to know a strategy of how you're going to deal with different things that come across in life. And how do you do that? It's only by communicating. Okay. So uh, it, it's it's an it's an very it's a very important aspect in marriage. All right. Now, before we get into understanding what are we uh, looking at when we we look at communication, let's just look at what are the different kinds or levels of communication. So would you imagine communicating to your spouse like how you would communicate to a shopkeeper? Would you? No, right? Would you communicate to your spouse like you would communicate to your teacher or a boss at a, at a workplace? No, right? Okay. Would you communicate to your spouse like how you would communicate to a friend? Okay. Sometimes, yes. So it's that part is needed. Then what is the... Why, why should it be much, much more? Or why should it be... Why should communication with your spouse be much more than how you would communicate to a friend? You have many friends, but just one spouse. Okay. So maybe. Because, you... Yes. Yes, please. Because there are certain things you can discuss with your wife, but you can't discuss with your friend. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. And that's what. You may see. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Kofi. So there are many things that you may discuss with a friend. You, you all think about the kind of friendships that you all have. Do you discuss all things with all friends? You don't, right? There are some friends you discuss some things, maybe about work is with some friend, about spiritual growth is about one friend. Somehow we kind of compartmentalize all of that. But what is expected in a marriage relationship? An intimate level of communication. Okay? So let's what is the difference in all of this? So when you are when you're talking to a shopkeeper. What is the level of communication that you are doing? It's very, very, very basic. No, it's very casual. You'll say, "Ha, huh, how are you? How's your wife? How's your... Maybe you may ask things like that. How's your business? Right? Where is your house? It's a very casual. You don't really want to understand anything much deeper than, than that. So it's a very casual communication. What about with your boss or with your teacher? Minimal, but it, there is a certain... Yes, go ahead, Kofi. Professional. Yeah, it's very professional. It has... There are certain facts or certain details, right? Even maybe when you're talking to a teacher, uh, what homework should I do? How do I do this? What can I do? That's, it's at that level. There's, it's a more factual, more data-based communication, right? What about with friends? Huh? Very casual. I'm sure you also share a little deeper than you may share a little bit about your life, some thoughts, some emotions, some experiences. Yes, you may do that, right? Depending on the kind of friend. But what is expected in a uh, in a marriage relationship? It's it's communication with no boundaries. Right, that you can actually be very, very open, very vulnerable, very bare, very okay. What I mean by the word naked is that you can just be completely open without having to keep anything aside. Well, that's how it should be. Maybe many marriages work at this professional friendship level, but it should be at a place where it can be intimate, where you can share experiences, emotions, be open, be vulnerable. Uh, and discuss whatever is there in all honesty without any fear okay so that's the kind of relationship that we are uh, i mean communication that we are looking at okay all right now how do you build that sorry it's a process correct absolutely but what are some of the things that's needed to build an intimate relationship what do you think honesty okay Trust, good. Then, uh, 
think of a very good friend maybe those of you who are married think of your spouses how do you build your communication with them what 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 makes it intimate time yes it's your intimate relationship is not built by one second of a phone call and say ah, where are you how are you bye tell no right it takes time so there are three things that's important it's time trust transparency three t's what are they trust yeah time trust and transparency so let's look at each of this time uh when you get up in the morning without any thinking you set aside time for eating right or generally we all should be doing it maybe some of us don't even do that but we you set apart time to eat do you have to clock and say okay by this time i should go and eat there is something inherent will inside the stomach kundi will push you to go to the kitchen and eat something right so you setting a regular it it has become a pattern where there is a regular time to eat so similarly communication should have that regularity that need to go back and have that conversation with your with your spouse and so that doesn't happen just like that initially it ha has to happen with a lot of intention right so you may need to I, I think probably may, may many of the students sitting here have your parents back in your home, right? Asapu, where are you? Yeah, I spoke about home when you went off uh, 200 kilometers away, Asapu. So when you want to talk to your parents, what do you do? You set time, right? You say, okay. I, I remember when I was in the hostel, that time we didn't have smartphones. every sunday 6:30 my parents will wait for my call right and so i had to walk from my hostel to a std booth make the call even if i'm sleepy nothing that 6:30 that regular time would be there if not i'll have a call back in 15 minutes what happened why didn't you call right so there is a you set a regular time and that also has to be done because it's something that you do intentionally especially in the beginning of marriage it doesn't come easy right so setting a regular time for uh uh for for conversation now setting this time should be at a time when you both have enough energy to discuss uh to have a conversation so one of the challenges we initially had in our marriage was i'm i i lose my brain by the time it is after 9 o'clock i i don't function whereas my husband is is like the most alertest he can he can go conquer the world at 9 in the night but we are right the opposite at 5 o'clock in the morning i'm 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 an early bird i i like doing things and i but my husband takes a little while to even wake up right so that became a challenge because the night times didn't work the morning times didn't work so we had to figure out something that would have equal energy for us to make that kind of a conversation again it's a it's a process it's something that we uh, we we are attempting to do intentionally so i think there's a question okay oh, right okay thank you thanks for those responses sorry i didn't have that open yeah all right so um so it's something that you do intentionally now when you're taking time to talk you have to ensure uh, generally what happens when you're uh, making a conversation with 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 a spouse i'd like you to imagine or maybe you've seen it in your own homes what are general conversations about usually routine things okay who's going to buy the vegetable what vegetable we mean we need to go to somebody's house what time are we going these are very 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 ba basic those casual almost like professional things something that has to be done to maintain the house we're not talking about that kind of a communication right that's important yes but then we're looking at something that is deeper that will build that friendship that will build that intimacy okay it's good to also plan for longer periods of time when you are uh, when you are hoping to build 
that communication. When you're having a deep, when you want to know somebody, it doesn't get done in five minutes, right? It needs a lot more of sharing, exploring, saying about old stories. That's how you get to understand a lot more. Okay. So giving time for communication is extremely important. All right. Okay. Let's look at the second one, which is trust. How do you build trust? How does one build trust? Sorry? When you're believing the person. Okay. So you have to trust by giving them trust, saying that, hey, okay, whatever you say, I, I do uh, believe or, yeah, I trust, right? So that's one side. What about the other side? Yeah, you also have to earn somebody's trust. No, you have to get somebody's trust, right? Like, for example, I tell you all, I say, you know, next week I will bring cake for all of you. Two weeks go, three weeks go, four weeks go, no cake. Will you all trust me if I say, hey, I will bring cake next week? After some time, you all will say, okay, this is Chumma. Right? So, so if you need to trust me, I also have to earn your trust by actually giving you what I promised to give you. Right? So trust is both earned and given. So how do we, how can we trust? So one of the things I think we, especially in marriage, that we need to be careful about is, see, there is a lot of personal um, communication that happens, open communication that happens. When does trust get lost? Yeah. Students, please, please go ahead and share. When does trust get lost? When do you lose your trust on somebody? Huh? Okay, when they lie, when they hide, yes, then? Say something? Okay, say something but do something else, right? Or someone has, uh, the, your spouse has shared something with you and you use that back at maybe at a time in a conflict or you're using it in the presence of other people, especially uh, your parents and your wife is there. So that can deeply hurt and break trust. All right. So the, the way that we keep information that someone is saying, and so when someone is actually being open and vulnerable to you, but then it's called hitting below the belt, right? That you're, you're hitting where it actually hurts. So, so using it against them, especially when it can, it can be really hurtful. So that's, it's important to build that trust. No matter what has been told to you, you keep it without being used uh, against them. Okay. Also, um, what you're saying, how you say it, what you say, saying the things in love and saying the things in truth is very, is again, very important to build trust. Okay. So trust must be earned and trust must be given. So it's both ends. It's just not one party that trusts. Okay. Again, uh, also to for the person, for, for your spouse to be able to trust you enough that you will not use that information against them at a time that they do not know. Right? Like maybe your wife, is, wife or husband has told you something and you go and share it with somebody else Okay, because you could not take that information, you've gone and shared it with somebody else, right? That can completely break trust. All right, okay. The third one is transparency. What does transparency mean? What does transparency mean? Being honest with each other. Being honest with each other, yeah. So is that a transparent window? Uh, what can you see? Outside. That means there's nothing uh, uh, blocking what is on the other side. So what does that mean in a relationship? There's nothing hidden. You are an open book. So you're able to share everything that is uh, deep within you, right? All your thoughts, your 
uh, feelings, your desires, your pain points, all of that. OK? Now, I just want to, uh, this is not in the book, but I'm, I'm saying this is because I've noticed this, you know, uh, in, in the interactions with people. Sometimes uh, men in some cultures find it hard to really be open. Why? Because if you're open, you will look weak. If I say, if, if my husband says, I'm very scared of something, they fear that they will look weak. And so they don't share. Is that true? None of the boys are saying anything. Right? It is true? Yeah. So, but yes. in marriage, sorry, didn't hear that. Yes. Coffee, yes. It in is true. Cases. Okay. Thank, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, and, and I guess it depends on the culture also, right? Because maybe in our kind of culture, probably the Indian culture, we are taught that, you know, boys shouldn't look weak. You shouldn't own up to what you're afraid of or what you're, you know, you're scared of. And that's a, sometimes a cultural thing. But, sorry, boys should not cry. Yes, if you cry, you're weak, right? But in marriage, that's where, that's the place you can be absolutely honest and open. Okay? All right? Okay, so to build communication, what do you need? Time, trust, and transparency. Okay. All right. So if any of you are interested, especially those of, you know, I think, uh, you know, when you look at how you communicate, you could do that little, um, uh, what's that, that table over there that shows you how well you communicate. Okay, it actually tells you how you do. You, play, you, could, you could do that later. You don't have to do this now. All right. So, so why is communication important? We were talking about that earlier, right? And we, we looked at some points. We said communication helps you to know and understand one another. It builds you to become much more intimate with one another. So imagine... Uh, living a marriage like how uh, you would go in a bus with a stranger. Many people have marriages like that, right? It's a, when you're going in a bus or a train, there's a stranger sitting next to you. You're like spending one day in train journey, but uh, physically, but absolutely no connection, right? But communication helps to know and build build each other. So a lot of times people ask me, what do we talk about? What are your thoughts? What do you talk about? Anything that interests you, anything that interests the other, OK? What else? Online students, what do you talk about? about How do the you... children. Yes, yes, about, go ahead. About the children. About, about the past memories, what how we had spent the time to uh, means the other places where what we have seen earlier. Correct. Yes. So when you take a person back into what you have, how did you live as a child, or what were your experiences as a young adult, you are actually helping them to get to know you a lot more. Right. There's so much to talk about. You lived what 25, 30 years maybe without a spouse, right? There's so much to talk about. And so when you keep doing that, you get to know and understand each other. OK. And as I said, as a cricket team, you need to talk to each other to build strategy, right? So similarly, you work together as a team when you are communicating. Because if you don't work together as a team, what will happen? There will be only chapatis that are made in the night. There won't be sabji because one will say, ah, okay, I think I will make chapatis. The other will say, ah, I mean, I will make chapatis. Then you will eat only chapatis. But when you communicate, you say, ha, you come make chapatis. When I come back, I will make sabji or chicken or whatever. Right? Correct? No? You are looking at me as a which world did Jean come from? Okay? So that's the important thing of communicate. Or, um, or uh, maybe some things that, that you probably manage, maybe your finances. Right? You say, OK, maybe you take care of uh, uh, this expense today. I, you know, I, I will look into that. So it, ha it needs communication. You need a strategy to work through things. Next one. 
you support each other. The, the biggest way that we support each other is through words. Right? Through words. Your spouse is feeling really upset, maybe at work. He's feeling very low. You say, come on, darling. I know you can do it. I have faith in you. You will get over this. I'm here with you. That's, that's a way of encouraging and supporting. Is that right? So you need to use words to encourage and to support. So you express that. Communication is also important to resolve any kind of conflict. Is that right? Yeah, so you're, you, you resolve every conflict through your conversation with one another. You cannot resolve a conflict by being silent, by assuming. You need to talk, discuss, build new ideas, evaluate what the problem is. And that's how you work through differences. OK? All right. Communication is also needed to grow together spiritually. How do you do that? Pray together. By praying together. Praying together. Yes. What else? Discuss about the sermons, what we have heard about. OK. Discuss about sermons. Yes. Have questions. Talk about it. Right? Uh, maybe you don't understand something, discussing about it. So that's how you spiritually grow, not, not just spirit, not just growing together, but also blessing each other, right? You can pray for one another, um, look at how they can be built um, at, in such a way. All right. Kofi, you have a question? Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, I would like to, if communication helps to resolve conflict in a situation whereby the, the other partner is not ready to have a communication with you when there is a conflict, how do you go about it? Hmm. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Kofi. That's that's usually uh, that that's a that's a good situation because you will find that in a lot of marriages. Um, there may be people who were not taught or didn't grow up in a home where they could actually talk about what their conflicts were. Right? So I think the first thing for us to understand is it may not be that they don't inherently want to resolve the conflict. It's just that they've never had a, a history of doing it. They've never done it at home. They've never done it with their parents. It was always, um, you know, pushed under the carpet, suppressed. The problem was suppressed, and then there's there's never been an attempt to do that. That's how maybe they walk into marriage. But there may be one uh, partner who is more expressive, who actually communicates. So the first thing is to really understand that the person who is not communicating is not that they may be disinterested in the marriage or disinterested in resolving the conflict. It's just that they do not know how. OK? And maybe that's when they need that help, probably from the more expressive spouse, to let them know that talking about a conflict does not build, con uh, build further conflicts. It actually brings understanding. All right? So helping them to see that conversations in conflicts is actually a good thing to resolve something. So, and that, that's how one can help, uh, especially maybe, like I said, the spouse who is probably more uh, expressive. Now, there may be marriages where both people don't talk at all. And those are the maybe the majority of the kinds that you will see in counseling sessions. Because they do not talk to resolve. It's kept inside. It's harbored inside for many, many, many years. And then it begins to yeah, become a real, real big issue. So that's exactly why during your time of preparation, you need to be able to build this aspect of communication, of being comfortable enough to share and to talk even when a situation is hard. And knowing that 
conversations in conflicts is a very very healthy thing or conflicts are a normal thing it's how you deal with the conflict that really matters okay so i hope i answered your question kofi yes thank yeah, you yeah, follow. yeah okay go ahead mike mike just a follow up question to what uh, brother kofi asked like um, uh, when you're uh, when there is a conflict and the other person does not want to discuss that conflict for whatever reason so the what do we do in this scenario one do we actually give them some space and time to come back on that or do we try to you know reason out or try to get that clarified and buried right there rather than you know mm. keeping okay so when you are attempting to resolve a conflict i want you to look at it in two different parts one is there is a problem that needs to be sorted right but on the other hand there is also a process of conflict uh, conflict resolution that needs to happen there are two things so generally when a problem happens our focus is on okay let's discuss this and sort this out but we're not looking at the other part of the process of that resolution and not look at okay what has been my style before i got married what has been your style so when you actually explore that first and come to a place of understanding that it's perfectly okay to maybe talk about something and then approach the problem it may make more sense so what we're doing is we're mixing all of this together right so the when you're having an issue with a problem keep the problem aside and say okay let's look at at what are different methods of conflict resolution is and then you may talk and say okay my method is i've never spoken about a problem and it has come okay guaranteed uh, i mean understood you may say uh, you know whenever there's been a problem in my home we all sit together lash it out talk about it that's how my style has been okay now there are two people with two different styles so now you are coming together and says what can we bring about in this home so then as you're discussing maybe your spouse will say you know the reason why i've never spoken about it is because every time i spoken about i've spoken about it i was shut down so then the other spouse will say you know you don't have to be afraid of that here you can be absolutely open i'm here to listen and understand what you have to say so you're actually inviting the other person to open up right maybe you would say you know yeah i i understand that in my home we used to lash out everything bring it out in the table that can be intimidating for you i can be careful on the you know how how much of it i bring or i will give you the space so first figure that out understand how you the process of resolving something and then with that understanding come to discuss the problem at hand make sense yeah okay all right any question ha huh. so that's why you need to know what their methods have been maybe their method is i've never spoken about it just leave it that may not be very healthy right so then you're slowly bringing them to that place okay um maybe you you're not okay to discuss it there would you like some space and then can we talk about it then they may say okay let me try that so you're finally getting to a place that yeah that that brings both of you to some form of a collaboration in discussing that all right okay all right next one is yeah um why is communication also important is that it will guard your marriage it keeps you from looking outside looking um for emotional support outside of marriage because when you are getting your emotional tank filled in your marriage you don't need to go outside to get it filled right right so it helps to guard children it helps to nurture children <clears throat> because the way that you communicate with each other will also have an impact in the way that your children learn to communicate or how they are built up yes and lastly communication also helps to really build certain memories right when you're talking about old things when you become little older you're talking about how it was when the children were small or what you did on your first week of marriage it all just builds memories and builds that sense of a connection okay that's why 
communication is absolutely important. Okay? Shall we move on? Okay. Now, there are different, uh, um, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, things that are needed in communication, or how do we call it? There are different parts in communication. And all of this has to work together. So there is listening and there is speaking. Listening, speaking. So let's look at listening. It says attentive listening. Have you ever thought of why God gave you two ears and one mouth? To listen more. Right? But what do we generally do? We speak more. Right? Okay. So we're called to listen. And why should we listen? What is the goal in listening? To understand. The goal is to understand. The goal is not to reply back immediately. Right? Like I will say, I may say something like, uh, you know, boys, you need to, boys and Diksha, you need to pay more attention in class. So you all may say, but ma'am, last, last, uh, didn't sleep last night, ma'am. You know, I was sitting and doing homework. Right? So before I could finish my sentence, you've come up with a response. Is that so? Right? So when we are actually listening, what are we doing? We are giving enough of space and time to really listen carefully without making a, oh, what do I say next? What do I say next? How do I say it? What should I do? Right? That's what we are always trying to build an answer in our heads before the person finishes the question or, or whatever the thing is. Okay? So listening is definitely more important than hearing someone and because it has the goal in is to understand the person. Okay. So what are some skills that you need for good listening? How do you listen well? Don't interrupt. Okay. What does interrupt mean? You will understand the meaning of interrupt? Don't speak in between. Correct? Okay. Let them finish their story. All right. One is no interruption. Then uh, how? How? What is the skill you'll use? Patience. Patience. Being patient enough to listen. Okay. What else? Huh? Sorry. Be sensitive. Okay. How can you be sensitive? Give me an example of how you can be sensitive. Uh, okay, great. Yeah. So when you're being sensitive, so when, if you're being sensitive, what would you say? Okay, I understand or I see that you're going through something difficult. Very good. Okay, what else? Don't make assumptions based on your experience. Wonderful. Nice. Don't make assumptions. There's a very basic thing. Yes. Listen carefully. Okay, listen to all details. There's one very important skill in listening. What is that? Be open. Be open. Okay, all right. Suppose Vimal is talking to me and I'm looking like that. How does Vimal feel? Yeah, because I'm not making eye to eye contact with you. Right? Yes. So having that eye contact is so important because it makes the other person know that you are actually listening. Okay? So there are two ways of how eye contact is not being built. One is looking away. The other is... What happens? That I know that you are sleeping. That's how I know sometimes you are sleeping. Because you are looking but... Like Asapu has gone 200 kilometers away from here. Right? Okay? So listening is... Very eye contact is very, very important. Okay? Maintaining eye contact. Yes, being open, being patient. Be clear of what you say. Be clear. If you want to tell me that... Um, 
maybe you want to say something to me, maybe something that I'm not doing right. Okay, you want to probably tell me that uh, I'm talking too much in class. Okay, but you're not very clear. You're saying, ma'am, the class is very good, ma'am. Uh, the class is long. There are a lot of things that you're saying. You, know, you say many things. Have I understood that you're telling me that I talk too much? No, no, you're not being clear. You be clear and say, ma'am, you're talking too much. There is, is uh, I, I don't understand what, what you're saying. There is too much of information that's coming. Can you please slow down a little bit? It's clear. It's clarity. It's being clear. Correct? Right? So these are some of the skills that that's absolutely important. Also, uh, respond. That's why I ask you if you are sleeping. Because I don't get any response. I don't get head nods. I don't get any facial expression. That's how I think you are sleeping. But when you are listening, you are being responsive. Saying, mm -hmm. Or you are asking questions, right? That's how you know that you are responding. So listening. So this is not about listening in class, okay? This is about listening to in marriage also. Okay. Uh, there's again a questionnaire that you can check to see how good a listener you are. All right? Okay. So some of the things that you can take back, how can you listen better? How can you listen better? Be attentive to what your partner is saying. Okay, be attentive. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, generally I do a, do a, a, a small activity, but because we have online students here, they can't do it. Only you all be able to do it. Maybe we'll do it another time. But something that will help to understand the importance of actually really listening. Okay. Uh, because we, we do something called a selective listening. What is selective listening? You hear only what you want to hear. Right? Uh, and, and the rest of the things, it's all just going away. That's called selective listening. That only that which, which may be either juicy in the conversation or something about you or something that is interesting. All the other details are just completely gone. OK. Uh, how can you improve that? So there's one more aspect in communication. Uh, it's not really uh, brought about here. But there's one more aspect in communication. And that's called feedback. So when someone is talking, they're telling you a big story. Right? When you give a feedback, you're actually letting them know that you've actually paid a lot of attention. It's one of the greatest skills in counseling, right? Where you're paraphrasing something that someone has told you. So then the other person says, Wow, you listened to all those details and you made it into this much. That brings up, enhances your communication a lot more. Okay? So try this out. OK, we, we will do one activity now. Sorry, online students, you may have to bear with me and e-learning students, because my students here are all going to drop to sleep. OK, so Sister, I, want... I have a question. Yes. Uh, then... What if uh, people talk unwanted stuff and you are not interested uh, in listening to all that uh, nonsense? How to politely stop that person? Uh, so, so when you mean? They are saying nonsense. Do you mean they're actually telling you one story and they're bringing in a lot of details, or they are, or yeah. it's like, lot which of one? details, unwanted details, and uh, unwanted information. Like uh, a small thing, they make it into a very long conversation. So, how to politely to tell them? <laughs> okay, so there was a question over here from one of the students asking you is it from the spouse or somebody else? From anybody else, not from spouse, anyone else. Not from the spouse. <laughs> OK. All right. So um, I think it's, uh, that's why I asked you, is it, is, it, is it about gossip, that someone is gossiping about somebody, and you know these are unnecessary information that, that you're sharing? Or is it something that the way that the person's communicating is probably? Yeah, the way the person is communicating is, you know, like a, 
uh, exaggeration too much of unwanted information and you know like you you don't want to listen to all that but you just sit and pretend to be listening so how to avoid that so i want you all to tell me some ideas what how will you say it what what can you say sister it used to happen in my office when we were and i was going for work okay all right so and the thing from their morning activities they used to come and uh, share it with us but we were not able to receive that actually okay all right so uh, one oh, of the like filtration ah uh, go ahead go ahead yeah. it was like some filtration what was, oh, means to some of the things where she needed some attention and caring or advice we used to just respond to that and other okay. things we used to just filter it off okay <laughs> all right okay so one of the students said tell them can we discuss this a little later okay all right that's yeah. one day all right you said lucy you said filter it take only that which is important that which is not what else can what else how else can you be very authentic in your uh communication be straight forward what will you say vimal what will you say vimal said straight forward so what will you say this is too much okay <laughs> all right uh, uh, yeah go ahead i, I think in the case of uh, sister jetri we have to understand that we have individual differences okay my wife is a teacher she teaches in uh, class 1 children and then nursery so she always wants to elaborate speak talk about a simple thing he would she would talk try to explain it as if she is talking to these children mm. so if you don't take a look at the person around and where she is coming from you always say she is a talkative sorry But i didn't follow you like, always uh, what did you say at the end you always you presume you presume she is talkative she talkative. talks too much okay okay she talks too much hmm. but looking at her background that is why for simple things she would talk say so many things but i have to understand and know where she is coming from so that is where i'm coming in with the individual differences so okay, we have to nice. look at the person's background yeah. nice okay so she said he said kofi said look at individual differences sometimes the way we communicate are very different and uh, we we need to be patient with the other person as they may express it very differently okay that's one way so okay i'll just answer this in the call so um my thoughts also are of course if it's from a spouse i completely do agree with what uh, kofi said you know understand those individual differences if it's uh, from let's say other people it's good to maybe say things like you know there's a lot of information that you're sharing and i'm probably not able to pick up the main point that you're talking about um uh, is this, is is there something that you have as a highlight that you want to tell me so i'm not being impolite but i'm helping mm -hmm. them to structure their conversation in such a way that they will come back so you know so i'm not saying be i'm not saying you know tell me what the point is i'll say there's a lot of information and i'm and i'm able to hear this but i'm not able to wrap my mind on what are you driving at so would you help me understand what exactly uh, is it that you would like me to know so you're getting them back into this so they probably again will go back like that but it's important to circle them and saying you know i'd like to really know what exactly you're helping me to pick up and i can respond uh, helpfully okay so these are some of the ways that we can contribute all right okay uh, thank you thanks so much for those contributions all right thank shall you, we sister. stop for a break and we'll come back in 10 minutes at 11 o'clock